Data is everywhere. But how was it collected? Who has analyzed it and interpreted it? And what was their purpose in doing so? An understanding of statistics is crucial. We begin by collecting data. If we're able to survey every person in our group or to get information from every item in our group, that data will be most accurate. But that's often really expensive and really time consuming to do. So instead, we take a sample of part of that group, making sure that the sample we choose is representative of our entire population. We then begin to analyze our data. You're probably already familiar with our three measures of central tendency, mean, median, and mode. All of those measures tell us how close to the center or how close to the middle are we given our data set that we have. Mode is the number that occurs the most often. So if you own a shoe store, you want to know what is the shoe size that most people are buying. You're going to buy or restock based on that value. Median is the value in the middle, so we have to put the numbers in order, usually from least to greatest, and then you're going to count what is that middle value. Mean is the average, so we add everything together, divide by the total number of values. Now there's two ways to represent mean. If we see this symbol, we say X bar, that's the mean of our sample. Mu, it's kind of like a little handwritten U with a longer tail, is the mean for the population. Because this is the mean for everybody, it's a more accurate number. So this is our true mean, but this is the one we most often are going to be using. Quickly to refresh your memory, these data values are a sample representing the time it takes a high school student to drive to school. The first thing we want to do is arrange the data in order from lowest to highest. So as I go through, I say, okay, this is my smallest number, check it off once we used it. This is my next smallest, check it off, and then count, does the number of data values here represent the number of data values we have here? If not, you might have missed one. Double check that because then everything else would be incorrect. The mean, this is the mean for our sample. So we're going to add all of our data values together and divide by the total. Now remember, you have to either put the numerator in brackets or press enter before you divide so that you get the accurate value. Median is the number in the middle. So you can start on this end, start on this end, walk your fingers into the middle. And if there's an even number of data pieces, you have to average those two together. So halfway between those is 14.5 minutes. Mode is the number that occurs most often. So in this case, you can now see we have two 15s. We don't have two of any other number. You can also have no mode if they all show up an even number of times. Those three measures of central tendency don't tell me the whole story, though. For example, let's say that this is the percentages a class has. For simplicity's sake, let's say half the class has a mark of 50%, and let's say half the class has a mark of 70%. The mean mark, what we tend to refer to as the average for this class, comes out to be 60%. If you take a look at my other class, my average for this class also happens to be 60%. Half the class got a 90%, but half the class got a 30%. I have the same average or the same mean in both classes, but I have two very different scenarios happening. We also want to take a look at how spread out is our data. We call those the measures of central dispersion, and there are two, range and standard deviation. Range is the difference between our highest value and our lowest value. So if this person got 90 and this person got 20, I have a range of 70%. In this case, if everybody in the class gets the same mark, I have a range of zero. There's no high and there's no low. Everyone has the same. We say that's a dispersion of zero. There's no scattering of the data, so to speak. Standard deviation is our second measure of central dispersion. That's the one that's probably new to you. And we use the Greek letter sigma to represent standard deviation. And it means how spread out are those data values. We're going to calculate the standard deviation in a second here, but what you want to be aware of is if we end up with a low standard deviation, it means that all of our data values are really close to the mean. So on a graph, if this is the number, if this is our frequency, so every time a person gets a certain mark, for example, we graph that. If everybody's really consistent and there's not a lot of difference in marks, we're going to have a low standard deviation. If we have something like this and we have a high standard deviation, we've got quite 
quite a spread. So we've got lots of people down here, lots of people up here. We're going to get a higher number with that particular standard deviation. And then somewhere in the middle is there's just, you can see kind of a more even spread of the data. So what you need to know is if we get a low standard deviation, it means you're very consistent. Everybody's right around the same mark. A high standard deviation indicates a greater spread. Everything is somewhat spread out here. This is the formula that we can use to calculate standard deviation. For the purposes of this course, you don't have to do it by hand. You have to be able to do it using technology. So in our case, our calculator. But instead of just the calculator spitting numbers out, you should have an understanding as to where those numbers are coming from. So X represents each individual data point, And we already established that X bar is the mean. When we take the difference between those two, we're looking at how far is each data point from the mean. Now, you could end up with a data point that's above the mean or below the mean. To get rid of any potential negative numbers, we square it, and then a square root cancels out the square. So essentially, we're squaring to get rid of a negative. We're square rooting to cancel that. So we're looking at how far is each point from the mean, and we're going to add those all up together. So this is the Greek symbol, also sigma, which means sum up. So we're going to take each point, figure out how far from the mean, Next point, how far from the mean? Next point, how far from the mean? We're adding those all together. We're going to divide then by the number of data points that we have, and that's going to give us the standard deviation, the spread for that data set. We have to be able to calculate this data on our piece of technology on our calculator. So I need you to grab your calculator, and you're going to do this along with me. We have a data set of math quiz marks. To get all of this data, statistical data, we're going to press the stat button right here. And when you do that, number one is going to be highlighted edit. We're going to press enter. And you're going to see there's a variety of lists. List two is the frequency list. We only ever use these first two. So we're going to start by typing in here. So 75, and then you're going to press enter. 41, and then you're going to press enter. So you keep going. Okay, as soon as you get that in there, you're going to notice it says in list one, my black line is now on uh, row 17. So that means I've entered 16 pieces of data. So always quickly count, make sure that you have the same number of data values entered. If you forget one, or if you accidentally make a mistake, you're going to have incorrect uh, data. So just quickly scan the list, make sure everything looks good. Then we're going to go back to stat. We're going to arrow over to calculate. And this year, we're always going to choose number one. So it's always going to be number one this year, one variable statistics. And we're going to go list one. If there was a list two frequency list, to get that, you would go second function and then number two to get list two. In this case, we don't have that. So we're going to go down to calculate and we're going to go enter. The steps begin the same way on the TI-83 calculator. You're going to go into stat. Number one is enter the data, type all your data, data in there. You're going to go back to stat, over to calculate. One variable statistics is what we want, so we're going to press enter. Now you have to put list one. So if you look on your calculator button, you can see list one is on top of button one. So to get that, we're going to go second function, number one, and it's going to put all of our data from list one into there. We're going to do enter. And here's our data. So now this is the same for both calculators. Check the number of data values. So that N tells you we've entered 16 pieces of data. We can see X bar, there is our mean. This is just the sum of all the data points. So they've added them all up. Uh, we, we don't need those ones in the middle there. If we scroll down, this is our minimum value. We're not dealing with the quartiles this year, so don't worry about that. This is our median, 73.5. Um, maximum value is 100, so we can use the maximum minus the minimum to get the range. And the one data value that's not on here is mode. But we've got the mean, we've got the median, we've got the data to calculate the range, and we've got the standard deviation. We're going to round all of those to the two decimal places. Okay, in your notes, we're actually going to skip ahead one page just so I can show you what happens if we have these two lists here. So we're going to go back into stat. Now, when you press edit, you're going to have to clear out the old data. To do that, you're going to arrow up and you're going to press clear. Do not press delete. It deletes the entire column and it won't come back even when you reset it. So just make sure you always press clear 
and then enter and that's going to get rid of the data and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to type in 40 50 etc you're going to get that data entered in there and then you're going to right arrow over and you're going to enter the frequency so i'm going to let you do that and then we'll come back all right so this is all of the math marks in mr stewart's class arranged in a table frequency is the number of students who earned that mark or the number of times that data point occurs so this tells us two students got 50 percent eight students got 60 percent 10 students got 70 percent and so on if we add up the frequencies we can tell that there are 32 students in this class and I can now quickly identify the mode because this is the highest frequency so that tells me most people got a mark of 70 percent my highest mark was 100 my lowest was 40 so if I subtract those I have a range of 60 percent in this class we can get that information from the table of values now, what we want also is possibly the mean and the standard deviation. That's going to be a lot more cumbersome to, to type in because we can't just go 40 plus 50 plus 60. It's 40 plus 50 plus 50 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60 eight times. So when you go to put this in your calculator, we're going to start by entering the data. We're going to go back to stat. We're going to arrow over to calculate, and we're always going to choose one variable statistics. So we're going to press that. Now we're going to go second function one to get that one in there, comma, and then second function two, and then enter. TI-84 calculator, again, we begin the same way. We go to stat, we go over to calculate, we choose number one, and now your screen is going to look like this. So we want list one in here. You're going to arrow down here, and only if there's a frequency list, now you're going to go second function number two to put that frequency in there. And then you're going to go down to calculate, enter. And what you want to check here is your number of data values. We should have 32. If you only have seven values, you didn't tell the calculator to take that list two as the frequency list. So make sure you have the correct number of data values. And now we can see that the average was that 69.69% and our standard deviation, this sigma here is 12.12. So the average mark on this particular quiz is about 70%. The spread of data is about 12%. This is our standard deviation. And then you want to check, do we have 32 data values entered? And those are your statistics. And one final note about entering the data into your calculator. Oftentimes you don't have students getting just 40 or just 50. It's within the 40s, within the 50s. So in the table of values, you will frequently see a range of data points, but you can't type a range into list one. So you're going to remember frequency always gets entered into list two, and then whatever the other value is goes into list one. What you have to do in this case is find the midpoint. So we're gonna go eight plus 10 divided by two, and the point in the middle is nine. 12 plus 10 divided by 2, the point in the middle is 11. 12 plus 14 divided by 2, the point in the middle is 13, and so on. So you're going to calculate what's the midpoint for each range, and then that's what you put into list 1. Okay, so we understand how to calculate those statistical measures using our technology. In this last example, we have Brendan, who works in a sunflower seed packing plant. They're packing the sunflower seeds into bags of 227 grams or bags of 454 grams. We've pulled a sample of 20 bags off of each production line, and they've recorded the masses of each bag. I put those 20 data values into my calculator, and I calculated the mean and the standard deviation for each. The average weight or the average mass for the 227 gram bag was 227.15 grams. So I'm about 15 hundredths of a gram over on average. In the bags that contained 450 grams or were labeled as such, we were about half a gram over. So the customers are going to be happy because you're getting more in each case. The standard deviation was 5.2, etc. on the smaller bag, 4.4 on the large bag. Now remember, the lower the standard deviation, the more consistent. So this is my lower standard deviation. That means the bags that contain 454 grams, there's not as much discrepancy in these bags. You will never have bags that are consistently all at each of the weights that they're labeled. They're always going to be a little bit over or a little bit under. These 227 gram bags are a little bit more over and under than these ones are. The larger bags, you are getting closer to hitting that advertised mass.